In this video, I'm going to show you how you can turn any PDF, one that you uh, get from the internet, that you purchase something as a PDF download, or you create yourself in Google Drive as a PDF. I'm going to show you with free software how you can print it in this booklet style format, just like a real book, and you know, make it pretty decent using some very affordable things such as two hole prong fasteners, a two hole puncher. Really, that's all you need to turn your home into a printing press and I'm going to take you step by step along the process. So let's get started. So the first thing you need to do is step one, print the book. So I'm gonna show you an easy way to go about that. You just need to make sure the file is a PDF format for this video tutorial. So this could be maybe a PDF book that you've purchased online, like the one that I'm about to print out. It could be something that you wrote yourself, poetry, your fan fiction, that you wrote for free in Google Doc and you're saving it as a PDF. Or you could go on uh, Project Gutenberg. There's lots of different places that have books in the public domain that are free for you to use and copy and print. So you just wanna make sure you have the PDF format. And why that's important is because we're going to use a free PDF reader called Foxit Reader to use that software to print it in booklet format. So I'm gonna show you right now on my screen the software that you need, where to go to download it, and then the printer settings. So let's go. All right, so the first thing you need to do is download it if you don't have it already. Go to foxit.com. And so you want the Foxit PDF reader. Hit download and you want to scroll all the way down. I mean, you did there. So just scroll all the way down to the free download right here. The Foxit PDF reader free download. Go ahead and click it. You're gonna choose if it's Mac, Windows, whatever else, and then go ahead and download it and install it, and then I will show you what to do next. Now, I purchased this PDF from the author, Derek Silvers, How to Live 27 Conflicting Answers and One Word Conclusion. It's a really interesting book. It seems like it just contradicts each other with each uh, rule to live by. It's really interesting. I have the PDF, but I would prefer to print it because I just prefer to read books in print. So you will see when you do something like this, you'll have all kinds of different files, maybe to put on your Kindle, uh, but we're going to print from the PDF file. So here it is opened with the Foxit Reader program. This is just going to make it a lot easier, no matter your printer settings, uh, to be able to print it in booklet format. So this is very important. These are the settings that everybody always asks me for. Go to file, go to print. Now right here, these settings, you want to pick, uh, pick your printer, obviously. And what you're going to do is here under print handling, click on booklet. Okay. The binding, leave it to the left. And, you, and a lot of times people ask me, how can you adjust the margins if you want to make them bigger or smaller? This is where you would do it. This is where you would uh, fix it. I would just leave this, all these other settings, however they have it, auto center, auto rotate. So this is it, Foxit Reader. It really does all the work for you. Uh, you can select all the pages or maybe you only, only want to do a few pages, uh, but just hit booklet. Leave it alone with the left binding. I would leave the margins alone unless you really want to mess with that. But you can see from your preview what it's going to look like. It's going to, going to give you plenty of room in the middle for your binding. And then that's it. Just hit print. Now, a quick note about the printer. You do need a double-sided printer. That is a printer that's going to print on both sides of the paper if you want to do this booklet style. So as you'll see, it, it'll start to print uh, the one side and then it sucks it back in and then it prints the other side. Of all the printers I've had, I mean, honestly, I can really recommend to you the Epson 2750 or 2760 is the one you can find at Costco. I bought this at Costco. Now this particular printer, it doesn't use cartridges, which is why it makes it so efficient, ink efficient. I have not put in new ink refills, I wanna say way over a year, maybe closer to two years. I've had the same ink since I bought the printer. It was the ink that came with it. I have not refilled it yet. 
So it's extremely economical. It's worth the purchase, especially if you print a lot of your own books. Typically, the ink is supposed to last for two years with normal use and the refills, I mean, the refill for the black bottle that will last you two years is $20. So it's extremely efficient and affordable. And this is what it looks like. I didn't change the font. I didn't do, I didn't change the margins, but this is going to turn out a really nice book. I'll show you how in the next step. All right, so as you can see, here it is all printed out. This is my text block right here. Now, if I were to fold it in half like this, it would be exactly the right perfect. I'd start off with the table of contents, just like a booklet. It would go from page one to page two, all the way now getting here where it's folded in the middle. This is page 54, this is page 55, and then it would keep going 56, 57. So it's, that's booklet format. If you were to fold it in half, it would be a perfect book in book order. Now this is, you know, this is a lot of pages here. If I were to do that, just fold it in half, well, it wouldn't look very good at all, right? So what you wanna do if you have a significant amount of pages is you want to cut them down in the middle. So you can, the very basic way, you could just fold it each page and go ahead and cut it with the scissors or you can use a cheap little paper cutter like this or if you have something more fancy but it helps to have some sort of a ruler or some kind of a guide even if you just fold it yourself in half so that you always cut in the same place for all the pages that way you always have um, the same size pages when you bind them together it's not going to be perfect but that's okay but it's gonna look a lot better than just maybe trying to fold it all together. Now, as you go through this process, you wanna make sure when you put the pages down to the side and you do the next one, that you don't mix up the order. So just be careful with that. So as I'm going through the pages, I can see that this is obviously towards the end. This is the last rule, 110, my page right here is 111 so I know that this is going to go face down just like that I'm keeping the order and this is uh, the introductory page so like that so it's pretty simple no matter what when I fold it and cut it I want to make sure that I'm matching up the pages one side is going to go with the beginning lower numbers and this side it's going 110 111 etc so I have my two stacks here and it's keeping it in order and at the very end i'll have those two middle pages that i just sandwiched together so is this a little bit uh, of a tedious process maybe labor intensive is there a better way sure let me know in the comments below if you know of an accurate way to fold multiple pages in half or of course i could just figure out some kind of a ruler thing so i know I'm always cutting in the right spot, you know, but I, I find this therapeutic. You're making something with your hands. You're creating a book. It, it could be really special if it's something that you created, that you wrote. So take your time with it. You can put on a book uh, to listen to an audio format or maybe watch a YouTube video or something, but just enjoy the process is what I'm saying. So here is my text block all finished to go in perfect order. I verified everything. As you can see, there's plenty of margin room there for me to do the next step, which will be to bind it. So there are several different methods. So there are several different methods. You could use a industrial stapler. So there are various different methods and I hope to do lots of other tutorials showing you those, but I'm gonna show you what I think is the easiest method. And what you would need is a two hole puncher. You can see here, I got it for $3 at the thrift store. I'll put some Amazon links down below, but you wanna find one that has this ruler guide or else you'll be punching holes all over the place. That's what I did in my 
original tutorial. So I got a little smarter here now and I'm using a ruler so that no matter what, each time I will always uh, punch holes in the same place. So that's it. All right, so I have finished now. I have my whole book hole punched. As you can see, the holes just line up perfectly when you have the ruler method. And now I'm going to and now I'm going to show you how to actually bind it. All right, now before we get started, you, this would be a good time to think of a back cover and a front cover to your book. And you can just use cardstock. You don't have to use anything. You could use a regular piece of paper that you put in a sheet protector. It's up to you. You can get really fancy and creative with this. I'm going to pick these two sort of cardstock, heavier pa uh, duty paper that I got from one of my favorite magazines, Flow Magazine. Now, obviously this is a lot bigger uh, than the book size. So what I'm going to do is cut out a piece that I would want for the book size for both parts. I'm going to cut out uh, this size of the book and then I'll meet you back here. All right, so here they are cut out. I love it. I think they look beautiful. It makes me even more excited for my homemade book. And I also have to, as much as I don't want to, <laughs> punch holes in the cover and back cover. All right, so we are ready to go. What you want to do is start with the back cover. So this is the part that is going to go out and I'm going to, I made a mistake already because this is facing outward. So anyhow, it's fine. It's fine. All right, so I'm going to put this here. This is facing out. I want this to be the outside cover. So now what I'm going to do is starting from the end of the book. So this is the last page of the book. I'm going to thread them through the two prongs just like so. Now you certainly don't have to add this step, but I do like to add a bookmarker ribbon so that I can always put a little, um, you know, bookmarker where I'm at. This is just gross grain ribbon or whatever it's called. So I'm going to cut out a piece in a color that I like to glue along the spine here before I put the tape over it. All right, so I picked this one. I think it goes re really well with the roses and it really doesn't have to be that long. So about this much. Now here is a little tip because when you cut it, it gets a little jaggedy. So if you, this is from when I was making hair bows many, many years ago. If you just take a little lighter and go like this towards the ends, it will just seal up the edges and it won't fray anymore. So that's it. All right, so now I have here some pH neutral PVA glue. This is ideal for book binding and paper projects. So I'm just going to spread it out here a bit. I'm gonna have to put a lot. I'm trying to do this here. And this is not the actual uh, book binding part, don't worry. This is just, just to add a little bookmarker and it dries really well. All right, so the last step is you want to cover up this and kind of put tape over the binding. So we need book binding tape. So I'll leave some links down below. Uh, I really like this one. And I like the white, there's black, there's different colors. So you just want it long enough to um, be the book's length. And we're gonna cover that two inch prong. So I'm just gonna eyeball it here. So what you wanna do is just go ahead and cover the prong. And you want to kind of sandwich in your tape here and pull it as high as you can, as tight as you can, over. And then you just wanna cut off the excess. I 
I think it's really cool in the times that we live in today with how cheap uh, paper is, you know, if you have a good printer, that the ink is really cheap, that you could really turn your home into a printing press. All right, that's it. This is the finished product. I love it. It's my own. I created it. It just makes it more special. So happy book printing. I will leave down below some links to my favorite Amazon products to do all of this. And I will be showing you other methods throughout the year as well. So make sure that you're subscribed. Let me know what you're printing down below. I'd love to hear it and happy printing. Bye. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you found it helpful. If you'd like to connect with me live, I invite you to join me over at my private membership site called The Schoolhouse. There you will have access to all of my courses, RC Course for Little, Sustainable Homeschooling 101, and how to run your home like a franchise. You will also have access to weekly private YouTube lives where I can answer all of your questions in real time or that you previously submitted and you can always watch the replays. It's only $15 a month and you can cancel anytime. So I hope to see you there. Talk to you soon.